So three things we're going to cover. What is social learning? Uh, a quick look at it in action and how it integrates into learning and development strategy. The first thing to define is social learning because most people have a different perspective. So easy way to explain it is what we use in our personal life all the time. I mean, if you don't know how to wire a plug or you've forgotten where the blue and the brown wire goes, then you go to YouTube and you watch a two minute video of that being played. If I've got a first degree burn on my hand, do I rush a hospital or do I put it onto the Google, do a quick search and then I'll work out do I need to panic or not. If I've got a new idea, I want to see what people think about the idea, whether it's stupid or good or to evolve the idea, I'll put it to LinkedIn. So I guess the purpose of this is actually saying uh, we use social learning in our personal lives on a day-to-day -day basis. It's there and it's using, it's not a new concept. At the moment, it hasn't really transferred across over to the corporate world. And that's a part that's really, really interesting for us. But before we maybe go into actually define personal learning, there's, there's, I've taken the top two minutes of the videos from, from this. And that's why, you know, what I'm excited about, or what I think is underreported, is the significance of the rise of online video. This is the technology that's going to allow the rest of the world's talents to be shared digitally, thereby launching a whole new cycle of crowd-accelerated innovation. The first few years of the web were pretty much video-free for this reason. Video files are huge, the web couldn't handle them, but in the last 10 years, bandwidth has exploded a hundredfold. Suddenly, here we are. Humanity watches 80 million hours of YouTube every day. Cisco actually estimates that within four years, more than 90% of the web's data will be video. Reading and writing are actually relatively recent inventions. Face-to-face -face communication has been fine-tuned by millions of years of evolution. That's what's made it into this mysterious, powerful thing it is. Someone speaks, there's resonance in all these receding brains. The whole group acts together. I mean, this is the connective tissue of the human superorganism in action. It's probably driven our culture for millennia. 500 years ago, it ran into a competitor with a lethal advantage. It's right here. Print scaled. The world's ambitious innovators and influencers now could get their ideas to spread far and wide. And so, you know, the art of the spoken word pretty much withered on the vine. But now, in the blink of an eye, the game has changed again. It's not too much to say that what Gutenberg did for writing, online video can now do for face-to-face -face communication. So that primal medium, which your brain is exquisitely wired for, that just went global. Now, this is big. And so, as we've thought about this, you know, it's become clear to us what the next stage of TED's evolution has to be. TED Talks can't be a, a one-way process, one to many. Our future is many to many. Now, is it possible to imagine a similar process to this happening to global education overall? I mean, does it have to be this painful, top-down process? Why, why not a self-fueling cycle in which we all can participate? It's the participation age, right? So I think that gets across a couple of key concepts. 90% of traffic is going to be video-based. So for social learning and these technologies, videos are going to be right at the heart of it. In fact, all the great TED presentations, like the one just shown, have progressed from touching around 2,000 people a year at different exhibitions to a global audience of over 300 million, simply by publishing edited versions of the presentations online. Imagine using this technique to share all the best ideas, expertise, and training inside your own organization.